Welcome to the Steve Reeve Podcast with the best moments from the past week and a few things that didn't make it to air. Monday. Largely, it seems to have been phones lately, but more people have been struck by objects while performing on stage. Feels like it's like a weekly roundup now, which is a little bit ridiculous. But uh, Drake, of course, of Canada, Harry Styles of, I think, the entire world, um, and then Morgan Wallen as well, all getting hit by something while on stage this week. And this is after a laundry list of the last couple of weeks. It seems to be a new trend and one that I will never, ever understand. I guess the more you rate against it the more it might happen right uh you people get it in their head that's a super funny thing to do for all these people that have paid way too much money to be here in the audience right now fantastic thought follow it through to the end for sure no don't just leave the phone in your pocket you might have some friends that just got back from a wedding is a beautiful weekend for it right absolutely beautiful uh probably wasn't the wedding out there in the world where they used chat gpt to officiate though that did happen In Colorado, specifically, just recently, chat uh, GPT, an AI chatbot, a generative learning language model, uh, was uh, curating uh, what the efficient would say in the situation and originally said no because it said, well, I don't have legs, I don't have arms, I don't have a body, I don't have eyes, I can't officiate your wedding. But then they eventually, you know, basically informed it, no, no, we want you to write what an efficient would say and a live person will read it out over speaker, all that stuff. I don't know exactly what it said. However, I do know that they said they didn't write, did not write their vows with chat GPT. They say that they did that themselves. <laughs> yeah, right. You're listening to the Steve Reed Podcast Podcast. from 100.5 Cruise FM. Elton John, last night on his Farewell Yellow Brick Road tour, happened on July 8th in Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, it was, of course, uh, going to be a big, uh, star-studded, emotional show. But uh, Coldplay actually paid tribute with a video broadcast that was uh, put into the show on the 8th. uh, And that was after 333 shows. Uh, <laughs> incredible. Nearly five years uh, that he's actually toured at that exact venue, the Tele2 Arena in Sweden. Coldplay showing up on the giant screen. They were actually performing in Gothenburg, Sweden at the same time. It's a slightly different spot, but close enough so they were actually beamed into each other's concerts simultaneously, but absolutely giving him a send-off, a very, very worthy send-off with two gigantic crowds saying goodbye to a touring Elton John. Meanwhile, Patrick Wilson, a horror movie star and uh, also included in the new Insidious movie, of course, uh, bonded with Slash, the musician over horror movies, a shared love. Uh, in a uh, new conversation with NME, uh, there's uh, Slash explaining the connection and that he bugs Patrick Wilson, the actor, all the time about new horror movies, especially ones that he is in or involved in and, uh, you know, getting the inside scoop. And speaking of Guns N' Roses uh, connections, The Ukrainian president Zelensky says listening to ACDC as well as Guns N' Roses was a big help to him over the course of the war so far. Something that none of us really need, and yet it's new and shiny, and we're jumping on the bandwagon. Threads is around and perhaps here to stay. We'll see. Maybe if Twitter sues them, it might not be. Uh, Threads reached 100 million users within four days. Yeah, kind of impressive. You might say that the thread count went up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you know what? That's a metric that really shouldn't be that impressive. And here's why. Every new major social media app or new internet whatever will continue to be accessed faster and faster as time goes on. It's it's it, every single new thing that comes out. They're like, oh, let's check it out. Here's here's a boasting claim to fame. We did it faster than anyone. Yeah. And the next one will do faster and the next one will do it. Fa- it's kind of like box office numbers for me for giant movies. You know, the big ones. Of course, of course, those records keep getting broken. It costs more and more to go to the movies or to do anything, really. I love how oftentimes people will cite, you know, the box office earnings of a movie from 20, 30 years ago, and then they'll have to be like, oh, but by the way, here's what that would be in today's dollars, by the way. So we actually have an actual comparison. Yeah, the number's going to keep going up. It's just going to keep getting faster. It's not really that impressive. Tuesday. Calgary Stampede on, of course. It's uh, as much about the ranching and wrangling as it is about the pancakes. To those who aren't familiar, 
Just about every day of Stampede starts with at least one pancake breakfast event somewhere, sometimes several of them. Uh, there's usually kind of like the flagship ones, the big ones. Uh, this time, they hit the world record, actually. Uh, the most pancakes served in eight hours at a big family day event. Uh, well, you know, family day during Calgary Stampede, that is. 17,182 served in eight hours. They did have like 29 of them disqualified. So sad. They also beat the previous record by something like nearly 3,000. So pretty good. Pretty good. Impressive. Awe-inspiring. Not to mention also appetite-inspiring. Great. Now I'm starving. Slash being a part of the Barbie soundtrack officially. Yes, the uh, Guns N' Roses, uh, just absolute virtuoso, apparently plays guitar on one track, and that track is a song sung by Ryan Gosling's Ken. Uh, the producer of the full album, Mark Ronson, told Variety that it was a dream come true working with a all-time hero like Slash, and while his guitar work isn't prominent in the song, it can be heard, and it is awesome. Here's a clip. <laughs> I cannot wait for this movie to come out. Double feature with Oppenheimer for sure. Uh, now the rest of the music news headlines are all about canceled gigs. Noel Gallagher and the high-flying flying, uh, high birds had to cancel a gig in New York because of a bomb threat midway through. Thankfully, everybody was evacuated without incident. Ozzy Osbourne says that he is having to pull out of the Power Trip Festival. Very, very big metal festival that's going to be happening in October. Saying he still is dealing with pain from a spine injury. Now, his original plan was to return to the stage in the summer of 2024, but he felt better when when asked about this festival, said, yeah, I can do it. Unfortunately, a little bit too optimistic. He says he's got to hold back for his own health. Wise. I like me a good swear word. You know, sometimes certain places, certain situations, eh, not the best choice, but very often I feel like it is. It's a lot of fun to swear. There's also been a lot of studies that have made, you know, correlations, little links between maybe uh, swearing actively helping you uh, experience less pain, you know? The, the, the response to stimulus is a little bit different. Uh, sometimes allows us to focus. Oftentimes it activates the creative side of the brain when we do so and has been associated with more trustworthy and honest people. All, all kinds of good things. But there hasn't really been a new swear word in a while. Yeah, some slang words come and go and make it a little bit awkward. But math has determined the next and most offensive term in English, that is. And I'm going to say it on the air, and I'm excited because I never get to say so-called bad words on the radio. So I'm, I'm going to enjoy it, all right? The word is... Banger. Oh. What? That's it? That's not offensive at all. Banger? Just makes me think of bangers and mash. Especially because King's College London is where the student Sophie McLean claims to have found the supremely offensive term. She also has a shortened version, Burr. <laughs> Burr! Burr to you, I say! Burr! Looks like the next great new swear word is probably going to just have to be made up. Sometimes the people upstairs cheese me off to such an extent that if I were the type to use bad language, I'd be employing it bitterly and repeatedly. No, use bad language, Moss, please. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> Ploppers! Wednesday in a headline that should be coming from one of the satire sites. Like, this should be The Onion. This should be uh, The Hard Times. It's, and I'll read it directly, uh, from the Daily Star. WWE legend The Undertaker protects wife from shark by simply standing and glaring at it. This is hilarious. I mean, he's married uh, to fellow uh, WWE contender Michelle McCool, and uh, they've been going on a romantic getaway, I guess. And there's footage now, I mean, like, it's not just being told a story, you can see it for yourself. A fairly big shark, I mean, maybe not one that's gonna take you whole, but like, couldn't put a chomp into you. If it so chose to, if it felt like it. Uh, is swimming around behind them as they're trying to take video, do their social media thing, she's pointing at it, being like, hey! And the Undertaker's just standing there. I mean it, he's just standing there in the water, facing this thing, and it thinks better of the situation it takes off, right? Also, it's just hilarious on some level to me. 
simply seeing The Undertaker at the beach, you know? SPF, my friend. SPF, probably like 666 for you. Big celebrations and honors for a lot of Canadian acts, Canadian rock and roll acts, as they are inducted into Canada's Walk of Fame. There's a mega induction ceremony in September, and they're calling the night Canada's Rock of Fame. Here's uh, some of the inductees, or uh, rather the in- included honorees. Um, April Wine, first Canadian act to see a music video played on MTV, by the way. Um, Chilliwack from Vancouver, 12 albums released over 14 years in their heyday. It's a lot. Uh, Platinum Blonde, Rough Trade is going to get some love, The Parachute Club, uh, Trooper, Trooper, of course, they're raising a little hell. Uh, Toronto band Lighthouse as well. Lee Aaron, who is Canada's metal queen. Kim Mitchell. Uh, and not just Kim Mitchell, actually. His band, Max Webster, is also going to be in there. Uh, you've got Prism. You've got um, Montreal's Michelle Pag- Pagliaro. Uh, and that's the first Canadian artist with gold records in English and French, by the way. And more. Glass Tigers in there. Whole bunch uh, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, September 28th. Hey, Alexa. Play the Steve Reeve podcast. The Trailer Park Boys are at it again, or at least one of them is going to be starring, and uh, the team behind the scenes putting on a new show. 30-minute comedy, eight parts, uh, no, no word about like a second season or anything like that, might be kind of like a limited ed- edition kind of thing, but it's called The Trades. I love it, because you do have one of the members, Rob Wells, Ricky, he's going to be to- Todd Stool. Todd Stool. <laughs> I guess that's the name of the character. A pipe fitter, uh, working class background, and a collection of big boy toys, as it's been described, um, alongside a bunch of other people. Tom Green amongst them. I don't know if for a regular or just like a, you know, a, a appearance or something like that. But the premise is this individual is working at an oil refinery and many pranks happen on the me- various members of the workforce there in the, uh, the oil patch. You know, I mean, that's pretty close, right? Not an exact match, but pretty close. Very Fort McMurray inspired, I imagine. Uh, the trades, that is. No word on exactly when we're going to be able to see that, but look out for it because it is coming and it will be available on Crave. And uh, I think that even in the original inception of the Trailer Park Boys and the phenomenon that exploded out because of it, the fact that we have Letter Kenny is all part of that sort of legacy, um, I think that they were really inspired not just by, you know, Trailer Parks towards the east coast of the country, but by Fort McMurray in particular. Because, I mean, don't quote me on this, I don't know if it's for sure, but I was told when I was younger that in the 70s, Fort McMurray had the largest trailer park in Canada. And that was due to a housing shortage and a boom of the oil sands operations, right? They needed to get a lot of mobile homes made real, real quick. And that's why it kind of exploded. We don't have that claim to fame anymore. However, the biggest trailer park in Canada is still in Alberta. It's called the Less Trailer Park. Kind of ironic because they probably should have called it more. Always a treat to have guests. We've got the executive director of the Justin Slade Youth Foundation. Hello, Mandy. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. Glad to have you here. And hey. oh, it's all because of the big event coming in August. The yes. Justin Slade Youth Foundation a golf tournament is back. We'll talk about that. And of course, what the heck the Justin Slade Youth Foundation does. Obviously, some for youth. But let's start at the beginning. The easiest place to start. What's going on for the golf tournament? Okay, so August 18th, uh, so we have our golf tournament. It, it will be our 16th annual Justin Slade Youth Foundation golf tournament and silent auction. We are going to be located at the Fort McMurray Golf Club this year. Yeah. Shotgun start at 1.30, best ball tournament, and we do have a twist on it this year that we have never done before. Granny <laughs> theme this theme. year. I was going to ask you all about it. Yeah. Granny theme, I love yeah. it. Yeah, we just kind of wanted to put something fun, something that people could laugh at or yeah. whatever, you know. Big thank you to Micro Hotel and Town Play Suites that they're going to come and run that whole for us and have a game offered and any donations that we collect on that hole we will donate back to the golden year society yeah and that's so cool yeah, yeah so you're raising funds for not only your organization helping yeah. out with the greater community and everything i think so cool and you're kind of hitting the bases you got the youth and the seniors exactly we like of. that whole intergenerational <laughs> thing we've done a couple of intergenerational days like i remember one time in the dugout we had youth creating records with um the people from the golden year society too yeah. right so we do like that intergenerational so crossover cool, yeah. yeah so well, it'll be really cool 16 years of the golf tournament it's almost not a youth anymore itself right it's almost right? an adult now. exactly it is it is i like i've seen i know so many youth now over the past like 13 years that i've been working there some of them are actually working for me some of them volunteer for right. the foundation and it's just really nice to watch that like change that you know even mentoring them as kids and then they start coming in you know as yeah. they get older now they're working for me so they get to give back the same thing that i used to get to do with them right it's, so it's, it's really becoming cool. generational in a way yeah it is. 
is. Um, yeah. And so w- for those who aren't aware, uh, the Justin Slade Youth Foundation, what do you do in the community? Right. So Justin Slade Youth Foundation, we are a nonprofit organization that provides youth ages 12 to 17 with organized programs, community engagement, and a casual drop-in center that promotes a lot of opportunities for social interaction. Um, everything that we do, whether it's inside the dugout or the field trips that we do, it is free of charge because we want to break down a lot of the socioeconomic statuses that youth may face in the community um, so that everybody has the same opportunity yeah. to take part. That's the kind of thing that, I mean, it can be, it was when I was a kid at, at times, not always, but it, that's the kind of thing that can be a real barrier for kids getting to know mm-hmm. other kids that are just their age and might have so much in common otherwise. And exactly. Things like that. Uh, giving some support, giving some structure. It's all very cool what you guys do mm-hmm. and people having fun on the golf course to support you guys doesn't sound so bad either. So how can people get registered? It's August 18th, so there's still time. Yep. So best way to register for the golf tournament is to email myself. So it is mandy.mcdonald at jsyf, as in Justin Slade Youth Foundation, yep, no. dot ca. Um, I can send over the registration package to you. Multiple ways to make your payment, whether it's e-transfer, paying by credit card, doesn't really matter to us. We'll find a way yeah. for that to work. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. And also checking out our Facebook page, too. Like, Facebook is a big thing for us too because we've come to realize though that a lot of youth don't use Facebook anymore. Youth are more the Instagram, Snapchat. For sure. But especially for parents or businesses that are looking to even sponsor because we are looking for a lot of sponsors right now. Um, our Facebook tag is JSYF and that it will come up in brackets as Justin Slade U Foundation so you can touch base with us there or you can check me out straight through email. <laughs> well, you really are trying to make it as easy as possible which is fantastic. I am. Um, so registrations are still going on. Uh, one player or foursomes are available. Uh, bank with silent auction all going to be happening alongside that shotgun start at 1 30 on the 18th mandy thank you so much for telling us all, all yeah. about what's going on thanks for having me yeah thursday shaving your entire body huh is that an option for staying cool in the summer apparently some people do swear by it uh but scientifically not much to it but let's unpack this just a little bit i mean there's so many different ways you got the angsty crank to drinking some cold cold beverages and Eating some ice cream, all kinds of different ways that can help you get that core temperature feeling a little bit more comfortable. But uh, but people are questioning, and there was even a new survey that was done in the UK asking how people do it, and a lot of people agreeing that yeah, shaving your body of all of its excess hair for the summertime is a great way to help. Now, humans, like as a species, we haven't really used our hair to regulate heat since like the Paleozoic era, or Paleolithic rather area. Uh, it's like we're talking long, long time ago. We don't have a lot of body hair. Speak for yourself, article. Um, some of us do have a lot, and I will say that you gotta. It, it does help to trim. I don't know about like a shave all the way down. In fact, right down to the skin. If you're used to having hair on your body, and then you get sweaty and sticky, clammy in the hot weather, it's a little muggy outside, and that is not a good feeling. But a little trim might actually help you. Still, uh, you know, don't do it near the ice cream. It's gonna get stuck in there. New songs from Prince, the artist who was formerly known as Prince and then now is formerly known as the artist who was formerly known as Prince and has, of course, since now passed on. Uh, the posthumous releases of two singles happened this week, All A Share Together Now, as well as Seven, the E-flat version. Uh, here's a taste of All A Share Together Now. The scriptures teach us, no matter how long, the debt of the ones before us must be paid. Oh, so groovy. I'm a big Prince fan. So cool to hear his voice again. And that's not it. There's actually going to be even more that will be released later on in August. Billy Joel has responded to the updated cover of We Didn't Start the Fire as put out by Fall Out Boy just earlier this month. Uh, it was uh, you know, a new lyrical set of uh, iconic moments in history, pop culture history, uh, instead of, of course, the ones from the 1989 song that referenced everything that happened before that. Uh, and Billy Joel has responded now saying, yeah, great, take it away. Basically, people had asked him for years, aren't you going to do a part two? And he said, no, nah, I've done the part one. So he says, Fall Out Boy, go ahead, great, take it away. And then it'll be on to the the next one in several decades. Thanks for listening to the Steve Reeve podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. I'm sure you've heard about it. The real cheeseburger from Burger King, Thailand. Oh, yeah, because nothing says real like American cheese. <laughs> 
Like, I think that, like, to count as cheese, like, sometimes those, like, uh, fakey singles that you put on there, I love it. I love it. They're great for grilled cheeses. They're so good. But I think they're, like, must contain 51% actual cheese product to be counted as cheese. And I'm like, so what's the other 49? Uh, but regardless, uh, I'm sure you've heard it's meatless, not in the plant-based sense, uh, more in the there's no burger on this burger at all sense. Instead, uh, with no meat contained between the two buns is 20 slices of that American cheese. Mm-mm-mm. And I guarantee about 90 minutes later, it will become uncontainable between your two buns, I'm sure. And of course, everybody's just thinking about The Simpsons. Mm, 64 slices of American cheese. 64? 63? Friday. The airport here in town is removing uh, kind of an iconic site ever since the newer terminal has been built. Uh, the the Snowbird plane, uh, you know, right as you get to the roundabout, it's in the center there, or was, as it's been removed. And now, I guess they're flirting with the idea of doing something else there and looking for a little bit of uh, input. And I don't know if it's exactly binding, you know, <laughs> but uh, they are absolutely wanting some ideas. And I've already seen the weather catcher photoshopped in there into a mock-up. You wasted no time on that one, but I gotta say, well played. <laughs> well played. It made me laugh. Um, I immediately thought Wolverine statue. Oh, yeah, we talked about that for decades now here in Alberta, northern Alberta. That's where he's from. Oh, let's do it. But then I actually checked it. Uh, the Edmonton International Airport used that as an idea for an April Fool's gag this this year. So, I don't know. Fubar guys? Talked about that. That would be cool to get a statue of them. Trailer Park Boys? I don't know. I don't know. As long as it's just not another Wood Buffalo. Love them? We're seeing them a lot, though. Dolly Parton says she would rather die. Uh, drop dead in the middle of a song on stage is preferable to her than retiring. And she is 77 years old saying, not going to retire anytime soon. Uh, and uh, an absolute icon, of course, now also a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. <laughs> but uh, she has uh, no intention. Uh, she was interviewed on Wednesday and said that uh, she's not going to be slowing down. She's putting out a rock album. She's got more comedy to put out there into the world. She wants more kids to read. All kinds of stuff. She's got plans still. Taylor Hawkins, of course, uh, the tribute concert nominated for an Emmy now. Uh, it was actually specifically one of the five nominees for the Outstanding Sound Mixing for a Variety Series or Special category, but still pretty special to see it uh, nominated for an Emmy whatsoever. We'll find out what happens with the Emmys, except for it might be a little bit delayed or changed or shifted due to all the things going on with the striking in Hollywood. Too much smoke. I'm done with it. I know. We're all done with it. North America in general is done with it, although when it happens down in America, they like to blame Canada for it. Uh, yeah, we're all in this together, ch <coughs> choking through the smoke. But it's also like ash on your vehicle this morning. If you park outside, uh, you'll notice that. I guarantee you will. Uh, it took me by surprise the last two mornings, you know, even today after experiencing it yesterday. And the thing that really got me is that as I opened the door to the vehicle, you know, when you like you have a little snow in the wintertime along that edge, that gap, and opening the door too fast will just cause it to just flutter into the sky, all chaotic. Goes on you, goes into the car, goes on the seat and everything. That was ash, little bits of ash this morning. Ah, it's gross. And I know I'm not the only one experiencing it because I just witnessed it in the parking lot below our studios where we got a little bird's eye view. Somebody opened their door and the exact same thing. I saw them react, recoil with a... <laughs> as ash hit them in the face. That's no... That's no fun. Thankfully, it's supposed to clear out throughout the rest of, you know, the today into the weekend a little bit. It's not going to be as bad. The forecast says it's clearing. Still, it's gross. Don't take it too lightly. Avoid it if you can. Transmission over. One more Steve? New podcast episodes happen every Friday or just tune into the Steve Reeve Show. Weekday mornings starting at 530 a.m. on 100.5 Cruise FM.